Hi everyone, I'm Maurits, Product Manager at Mendix. I'm here to show you how to build intelligent AI agents using Mendix Studio Pro. Today, we'll create a support agent that can understand customer queries, search through knowledge bases, and provide intelligent responses, all within the Mendix platform. To start building agents with Mendix, we're gonna be using the Agent Builder Starter app. This starter app comes with all the required modules already installed and good to go. I'll click on Start with App, and I'll give the app a name, I'll call it Agent Demo App. I'll have an app icon and an app description, which are optional. I'll leave that out for now. Click on Next. You'll see that the Agent Builder Starter App is selected, and I'll click on Create App. With the app created, we can go ahead and open up Studio Pro, and then open up the Agent Demo App. With the app opened up, there's only one last thing we need to do before we can actually run our app. And that is to configure the actual encryption key. Now, why do we want to do this? So that we always have a secure app. So I'll go to my configuration, edit it, go to my constants and enter an encryption key for now. And with that encryption key set, we can go ahead and run our app. With the app now running, we can go ahead and log into the app. So I'll log in as an admin user, and I'll see a few things. First thing I'll need to do is set up my connection to my LLM. Now, why do I need to do this? Well, because every agent relies on, well, large language models to be able to perform different kinds of actions. In this case, I'll be using the Mendix Cloud Gen AI resources, but you could also use Azure OpenAI or Amazon Bedrock, whatever you prefer. You can even create your own connector if that fits better with your requirements. In this case, I'll click on the Mendix Cloud Gen AI resources and I will have to import several keys. Now, I'll first need to go to the portal and from there, I'll need to go and add keys for my three different Gen AI resources. So I have a text generation model and there I can click on and go to the keys and I can create a key and I'll name this Agent Demo. And I'll generate an API key, copy this key, and then paste it into the import key box. When I then import said key, you'll see that it comes with the Anthropic Cloud 3.5 model uh, with the text modality, and I'm immediately able to use this. I'm then also going to go ahead and immediately add my embeddings key and my knowledge base key. So I'll go to my embeddings model here. I'll click on keys again click on keys management and enter agents demo and I'll generate API keys for that. Copy that and import set key as well. And then lastly, I'll also do this for my knowledge base. So I'll go back to my knowledge base, go to keys there and add another key there. And I'll then generate that, copy the key and then in my app, I'll import set key as well. And if I then click on knowledge bases, you also see that that knowledge base is there as well. Great. So that's all the configuration I need to do to connect to the Gen AI resources on the Mendix cloud. And I'm immediately able to start using this. So how do I actually start using this then? Well, since we are building agents, what we'll want to do is go to the agent configuration here. And if I click on agents, I'll actually see a list of agents that are already there. And in this case, the Agent Builder Starter app comes with the Support Agent pre-configured. So I can click on this Support Agent here, and you'll see quite a lot of information all of a sudden. So you're actually able to change the version of, of the Support Agent. You're able to define a model, as well as change several parameters. Then you're also able to view a prompt, which is the system prompt, of course, that you can pass along. You can also pass along a context entity, or even add different tools for the agent. Next to that, you can also add knowledge bases for this agent so that it's able to call different knowledge bases and retrieve information from there. Now, first thing we'll want to do is select a model. And if I click on the dropdown, I'm able to see the text generation model that we just configured. Now, I then have my support agent configured and I can actually save it as a new version. So I can say uh, my custom version. And I can save it 
And if I click on this drop down for version, you'll actually see that I can view the different versions and also see the ones that are currently in use by my application. In my custom version, I could then also go ahead and change the prompt, for example, if I want to. I can also go ahead and select my older version to see exactly what the deployed versions are. If I then click on the plus button, I can immediately create a new version and edit the prompts as well. Now, how do I then use my agent? Well, I can either test it directly in my environment here, in my admin panel, where my test agent is, or I could go ahead and switch to one of the other users in my app. For example, my demo user, who already has several requests here, who has a support the system check box here, where they could ask questions, or I could ask it directly from the agent configuration. So if I go to my agent configuration, I can ask my test agent here a question as well. And I can ask it, can you help me with requesting a new laptop via a support ticket? And we'll actually go ahead and use all the different configurations of the support agent to actually set up the support ticket. Now, in this case, it actually will come back to me with several questions. Why do I need a laptop? Are there any specific requirements for the laptop? And I will say, well, I, I need a new laptop because this one is outdated. I would like a MacBook, please. And then I can click on send again and it will actually go ahead and try and create a support ticket for me. And there you see that it's created the new hardware request ticket for me. So if I then go back to my agent configuration, I'm actually able to tweak this agent as well. So in here, I could either add a new tool, which can point directly to a microflow. So it could be any microflow essentially. And let's say we want to add a tool to integrate with Zora. Then we could give that a new tool a name, integrate with Zora, give it a description. This will log a new support ticket. You can then select the module where this is located, select the microflow that relates to it, and then I can click on save and it will actually add the new tool in the tools list. Now this will immediately allow the agents to actually start using said microflow. As we mentioned knowledge bases before, we can also use knowledge bases to extend the capabilities of our support agent. We can do so by then clicking on new and then selecting the knowledge base we want to use, giving that a name. And this could be my support knowledge base, which contains all the information that we want our knowledge base to have. Now, if we go back to the portal, since we are in a knowledge base, that could be a collection within this content where I could also add other documents, either from a file upload or from any other integration point that we want. Going back to the app, I'll actually give this a description. So this is my knowledge base with support information. And I can also say that it should maximum have five results and that it needs to have a minimum similarity of one. If I then click on save, my agent is now able to also start using this knowledge base to actually retrieve and get all the right information for my support use case. Now, with this all configured, I can actually go ahead and save my support agent. And let's say that this is my support uh, agent for production. I can then also say that that is the version that I want to use from the check agent version and use dropdown. And let's just say that this uh, has KB integration. So then save this. With our agent now set up, we can actually go ahead and use it in our running app. So I could go and switch to my user account, who already has several tickets, of course, but they maybe want to open up a new ticket as well. Now, of course, in the starter app, it's immediately set up for you so that you can start using it. So I could say, well, how, do, how can the support assistant help me today? Well, we requested a laptop earlier. Well, maybe I also need a new phone. So let me request a new phone. Can you open a support ticket to request a new phone? 
it's actually got to go ahead and have a look at what is there and what can, what can actually use to be able to configure all of this. And as you can see, before we configured it from the admin perspective, but by setting a new version in use, it's actually able to immediately create the ticket for me, request all the right information and set everything up just as we need. Now we've created our support agent, but what about creating a completely new agent from scratch? To do that, I can go to the overview, click on new agent, and in this case, I'll actually create an agent that is designed to provide guidance on AI topics. So I'll call it AI guidance agent. And I'll name it agent that describes AI topics to the user. And it's a conversational agent. Click on save. I'll need to select my model. And as a system prompt, I've prepared this prompt here. You are an AI assistant designed to help people understand more about what is possible with Gen AI and agents. Explain any questions users may have about these topics. I'll also link it to a knowledge base that I have, just the knowledge base with the portal managed content. And I'll name this AI KB and I'll give it a brief description. This knowledge base may contain information about AI topics. I at least want, I want uh, the maximum number of three results. If I then save my agent, I'll say that this is my AI guidance agent. First release, add that to my description as well. And I'll also set this as my in use version. I can then test this agent here. And I can ask, for example, what is agentic AI? And then we'll see, well, the knowledge base I selected doesn't actually have that information just yet, but it still is able to provide me with the right information. Whereas our support agent would of course not have provided this information because it's guardrail to only provide information about support information. Now, how would I go about and use this agent for my user? For that, I can select my name of the agent, go back to Studio Pro, and inside Studio Pro, inside my first support agent module that I have here, which is of course part of the starter app that we started with, I'll have a data source chat context agent commons microflow, which I can open up. In this microflow, I retrieve an agent from a database and then I start a chat with said agent, and that is actually the context for the chat window that we talk in as a user. I can then open up my retrieve action, edit my XPath constraint and change it to that the title of my agent is AI guidance agent. I click on OK. Save my microflow, rerun my app. And that's using my new agent now. So the app is running. Let's jump back to it. The app has been reloaded. And if I then switch to my demo user, I can open up a chat window and then ask the same question. Please explain what agentic AI is. And as you see, we get a very similar response as to what we got just in the test agent. And of course, it's no longer guardrail to then provide information about support tickets. And that's all there is to it to setting up a new agent inside Studio Pro. What we've built here is a production-ready AI agent with just configuration. No complex coding required. The agent can integrate with your existing Linux applications, access your business data, and provide intelligent automation. Key takeaways, visual agent development, multiple AI provider support, version management for safe iteration, and seamless integration with your business processes. Thanks for watching. Now try building your own agents with Linux Studio Pro.